최고 all right guys welcome back so today i'm just going to give you a bit of a rundown on the boat i've done a fair few mods and that sort of thing since i got it what nearly six months ago so basically yeah i um got the boat oh, i think it was late june and um yeah it's been awesome haven't had any i haven't got any real complaints with it to be honest like for a 4.2 meter boat it gets me into some pretty incredible places especially like your shallow creeks and that sort of thing i find like it's got probably only about i'd say eight to ten inches of draw which gets me over most of the sort of shallow sandbanks and i can trap myself in the creeks and generally if i have to get out i can find a way out and yeah overall i'm pretty stoked so let me run you through a few of the things that i've done yeah one of the first sort of things that i really wanted to get done to this was up the front here we had the anchor well i'm sure you would all remember it from the from the first video i did when i revealed the boat but yeah the anchor well sort of took up a lot of space on the nose and just based off my old tinning i used to like to get up on the nose a lot and this gives you a little bit of a higher vantage point and that sort of thing so i um was trolling through facebook and i found a guy called jared from jared's tinny mods and uh he builds like a custom anchor well which is designed to fit in straight into like these renegades and outlaws and that sort of thing so basically that's the anchor hatch there just pop him in it's all reinforced so you can stand on it i've got my sea anchor and my sand anchor in there but yeah clips shut it's got some rubber seals around it which just stop the noise and i got it welded up by the guys at svenson boats they did an awesome job that's like proper weld porn quality that stuff so yeah that was one of the first things i wanted to get done and it's really freed up the nose of the boat definitely worthwhile so yeah if you're looking for something if you've got a renegade or an outlaw that's probably one of the best upgrades you can do straight off the bat and then next up i had I had the old Mickey Bird and it's, it served me well. I had that thing for nearly five years and it's still running strong and that. I just got a bit of FOMO. I saw a lot of stuff coming out of the Garmin units and uh, like I said, I got FOMO and really thought I was missing out on some things. So, you know, I really like the Bird, but going offshore, I found it really lacked it a lot, especially when you're searching for ground. It was, like I say, I'm not saying anything bad about it because it was a good unit, but it just wasn't up to scratch with what I was seeing coming out of the Garmin stable. So what I've done is I've gone and got myself, that's an 8412, and uh, yeah, we rigged that up. So I started with that, I got that and rigged it up first, and um, I've been very impressed with it over the last sort of probably two to three months that I've been using it, and um, so much so that I didn't want to do it, I didn't want to get the live scope, but once again, FOMO got me and I went and lashed out and gave the gum the upgrade. So basically what I've done there is live scope, got some mounting brackets from GFAB, GFAB pole, and I've ram mounted that to the railing. And got another travel mount up the front there, which holds it nice and steady if I'm going offshore. But the good thing is, if I know I'm not gonna use it, it's really easy to disconnect and take off the boat. So. If I'm going wide out offshore and I know that I'm not going to use live scope, I can just pull that off and then, you know, it's like it was never there. So basically with the Garmin and that, they do run better if you can run them off their own battery. So there's nothing else drawing off, drawing power from the system. So I've gone and got myself a uh, 100 amp hour Invicta lithium battery, which is down here under the nose. And there's my Garmin black box. It's all strapped in double strapped and triple strapped and as you can see that's the transducer there i can just undo him pull him out of this little hole here that i've cut in the floor and i can remove it when i don't need it so i haven't had a play with it yet i did go out the other day and we were intending on playing with the the live scope to get my head around it a bit but it was just too rough and we put it in it doesn't work very well in, in rough water so it's probably going to be sticking to the creeks with the live scope from now on but that's all good it's all part of learning i'm not affiliated with garmin in any way and that sort of thing everything you see on the boat i've paid for out of my own pocket for my own reasons and yeah now i've also upgraded the uh electric motor battery and i've put in a, another 100 amp hour lithium another invicta you've got a seven year warranty it's pretty hard to beat that like you do pay for it but i'm of the impression that i'm going to pay for quality 
I'll buy the best that I can afford and if I can't afford it, I'll save up more and get it. So basically, it's strapped down under my esky because I've got the esky strapped in now because I got sick of it sliding around. But under there, you would have seen in the last video where I showed the boat off, there's a battery box under the floor and that's got my 100 amp hour Invicta which runs the uh, Min Coda. So yeah, as you can see, the carpet's still in the boat. It stinks, I hate it. I am going to get an EVA flooring put into it, but it's just one of them things. I don't want to go and rip the floor up and put Thermalite and EVA in until I get my underfloor tank, and that's still coming. I'm still running the 20, 25 litre little um, Yamaha tank that come with the motor. So it's, it's okay, like the boat's quite economical. I've done a few runs now where I'm doing 120, 130k round trips, and I'm getting away with about 40 odd litres of fuel. I'm getting about three, kilometers to a litre which is quite good uh, it's not fast but it's definitely fast enough and I'll go for the economy every time another one of the little upgrades that I've done which has made a huge difference and I didn't really feel like it needed it at the start but once I did it it was incredible it doesn't cost much but it'll really upgrade your boat's performance and it helps you just jump up on the plane and that a lot quicker and then it also holds you stable in the rough weather so I'll give you a look at that That's the fast tail. So yeah, the fast tail really helps you jump up on the plane when you've got a heavily loaded boat. So I've always got a lot, a lot of tackle in the boat. So it does sometimes weigh you down. I do keep a bit of a spare fuel in the boat as well. So just ha having all that extra stuff in the boat does, you know, it takes its toll and in, in, in performance of the boat. So the fast tail helps you jump up on the plane. And once you're up and going, it's really good on economy and that sort of thing. So. Guy in Townsville makes them, I got one, I just jumped on his website, gave him a call and then yeah, um, ordered it, was here two days later, I fitted it all up myself, as you can see there's a couple of bolts there, and um, yeah, it's pretty simple to install yourself if you're half mechanically minded, but um, yeah, you don't even really need to be, it's just make sure you get your holes nice and straight so it looks good, but um, yeah, hi highly recommend getting one of those just based off my own experience like offshore it seems to hold the tail down in so when you come up and over instead of coming down landing heavy it holds the the back and keeps the boat level so it pushes through the swell a lot better and definitely makes a big difference to the ride when it's a bit sloppy one other little thing i've done with the motor i'll trim him up again yeah you'll be able to see this down here That's a skeg guard, so. So yeah, as you can see, my prop cops are hiding. It's still on my first prop, but I consider props to be a consumable item when it comes to boats, because I do spend a lot of time venturing up creeks and that sort of thing. I don't always know what's up, up the creeks and what's ahead of me, even though they're my, I fish a lot in my local waters, it's always sort of hard to know exactly what's there and when sandbanks move and that sort of thing and you hit them or a log washes up i just wanted to have that bit of protection i just know from my old 40 that the skeg copped an absolute hiding and to the point where there was big chunks out of it and that sort of thing and just having a brand new motor i wanted to sort of protect it as much as i could so that little stainless skeg guard right there there's another one of the little upgrades that i've done which i find has been awesome stuff getting bust up behind me but yeah so basically that's a bit of a rundown on what i've done to change the boat i'm um i've got dave and ellen here they're gonna now i'm going for a walk looking for seagulls or something <laughs> and uh yeah i'm gonna go give this live scope a bit of a test run on the way out to where we are now we've so a little did a little bit of a side scan we found a few threadfin salmon by the looks of what they were sitting uh, in the river so we're going to go and have a little go at them once the tide drops out a little bit more and there's a bit of a back eddy created i'm going to chuck the live scope in and hopefully we can get a bite on film now it is the day of the moon so tonight's a full moon which is not really a very fun time to fish in my experience so I'm not expecting to catch fish, but if we can see them on the live scope and see how they're reacting to lures, it's gonna be pretty cool just to see. And that's one of the main reasons why 
I went with the live scope. It's just, I watched a few videos. I've seen some things coming up in my news feed and I saw the stuff that was coming out of it and I was just like, nah, I need to have that. So lashed out and put that on, which I think is gonna be a real game changer, especially when the Barra season opens up again and I sit on them big schools of soldiers for hours and hours at a time. So I'm, yeah, really keen to get my head around that before the season opens up again. Another little mod that I've done is I've just added a little gas strut into the rod locker here. As you can see down the back there, it just helps hold it up because there's a couple of times there where the rod, the rod locker would slam back down and uh, rod, rod, rod tips and uh, locker hatches don't really mix too well. So as most people would probably already know, but yeah, that little gas strut there, I just got it from Road Tech. It was, it was about a hundred bucks or something like that, but it's a lot cheaper than broken rod tips. So, you know, that's another little, good little um, mod that's serving me well. I really want to get one set up on the front there where I was showing you the um, the black box for your li live scope set up. Just so when I'm in there and I'm like playing around or if I'm charging batteries or whatever, I've got something to hold the lid up because yeah, it comes down and slams on your head all the time, especially when I was installing it. So that's gonna be the next little mod I do. And then, yeah, like I said, down the track, I'm gonna rip up all the flooring and I'm gonna put a Thermalite flooring in there with EVA tread, but I don't wanna to go to that extreme before I put my underfloor tank in. So I'm hoping to get about 50 liters under the floor. Uh, I know a few blokes that have done it and they're getting around that sort of thing. So 50 to 60 liters, and that should give me a really good range, probably about 150 Ks if I sit on a cruising speed of about 4, 4200 RPM, I reckon. All right, another one of the little things that I'm looking, looking at doing down the track is, as you know, I don't really do much live bait fishing or bait fishing at all, really. Uh, it's got a live bait tank down the back here. So um, I've been using it to store rubbish and uh, when I'm bleeding fish out, I'll usually bleed them out in there so I don't get blood all through my esky and that sort of thing. But what I want to do is I want to basically pull up this whole section and then make it just like this side, which is one big hatch, but then I'll have it so a, there's a tub that lines perfectly on the other side, like mirrored. So the whole thing, I'll still have a live well, like a live bait tank or a live well, whatever you want to call it, but it'll be a lot bigger. So if I do want to fish competition where you need a live well, of a specific size it should hold around 80 liters i've worked out so i'll have plenty of room there if i want to go and fish sooty comp or something like that where you need a live well so that'll be the, one of the next ones i do as well but once again it's, it's just a never-ending process it's always looking at little upgrades and just things that you can do to change it to make it better so yeah as you can see i've still got the original prop on there i am still looking at changing it but uh I haven't really found the need to yet. I'm gonna wear that one out pretty quick. So it's been on there for what, nearly six months now. It's missing a bit of paint and it's a little bit smaller in diameter than it used to be. But I think um, when I get a new one, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger with a little bit less pitch. I'm thinking that's gonna get me to where I wanna be with my figures and that sort of thing. But yeah, basically I'm tapping out at about 5,400 revs, 5,500 revs. Um, with the prop that I've got and that's fully trimmed up and loaded so it's not too bad but I do think there's a little bit more I can get out of it. I've also mounted up the um, VHF radio which is just hidden down here. I don't know if that's really the best spot for it but it was really hard to try and find somewhere where it was going to be easily accessible and sort of neat so I put it there just for ease of use I guess you could call it but um, it does look a little bit messy but that's probably just me being fussy. All right, Dave and Ellen are coming back. They've been picking flowers up on the beach. We're going to go out and do some fishing now. We're going to go and put this live scope in and hopefully pull a thready and try and film it for you guys. All right, we're up the creek now. We've got the live scope in and I'm having a little bit of a play, but I really have no idea what I'm doing. But I'll give you a little look at the screen and you can sort of see we're sitting on a whole bunch of threadies. These guys are all stacked right on a current line. We've got the current coming this way and then where, where, where the two currents, the, the, the tide's running out and then the back of he's running in. The fish are sitting right up on this line. That's them there. I've put the vibe through them a few times and you can see the lures swimming through. They swim over to it, but by the time 
we get the bite already off the screen. I haven't worked out how to do my screen recording yet with that active captain app, so I'll come back to this with another video, but I'm gonna put the side scan on now just so I don't have to keep changing the angles and I'm gonna get stuck into them, hopefully. out of his mouth he's dropping berries I want to see what they are he just dropped there oh. they must be eggs eh oh. <laughs> are they I've never seen anything like it Come on. Give them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go play marbles <laughs> all right you can go back I reckon they, they must be eggs eh yeah. Put back in. I've never seen that in my life. Yummy. Caviar. You can actually see inside them like there's little baby catfish. They're not catfish, but little embryo looking things. I've seen forked tail on the sounder and got excited, but with all the fresh coming down, I've got a feeling that that might be what all these fish are. Really? Yeah. Because they're not drawing that real long. Again? This isn't, this is not a thready. This is a catfish, I'm going home, and you're having a beer. It's gonna be A. I wonder if he's got any berries. Yes, he's gonna have berries. Yep. Okay. We might call it. I'm not staying on this crap. Mom's car. That's us back at the ramp, guys. Thanks for watching. While we're here, I might give you a quick look at the stuff I've done to the outboard while it's out of the water. It's a bit easier to see. So yeah, that's a fast tail. All I've done is just measured my measured my holes out and then I drilled it up, drilled out the holes and measured them up so it was all nice. And uh, yeah, definitely a worthy upgrade for any sort of renegade or outlaw. That's for sure. That's the. Uh, the skeg guard there it does have some branding here but i have no idea what it says but yeah i just bought that from one of the local boat shandry places prop that's a prop i'm running it's definitely going to get upgraded like i said i'll probably want to go one size bigger maybe down to a 12 pitch but we'll see what happens with that we might, might trial a few others one other thing i want to sort of show you like i'm getting a really good reading at speed so um, I just wanted to show real quickly what I've done with my transducer placement. Like I fitted all this myself, but I did watch 
Ben Weston's video on YouTube on how to set it all up. But basically, I'll just set it up. So it's sitting in between the strakes on the hull there, and it's like about five mils below the bottom of the boat. So it sits in the water the whole time, and is um, gets gives me a good reading even at speed, which is really good for offshore and that sort of thing, finding new ground and that sort of stuff. So yeah. There's a quick layout of the boat, as you can see, for a 4.2 metre boat, there's plenty of space in there. We've just fished three people and there's three people's tackle in there, so definitely plenty of space. And then that's the live setup, which looks nice and neat, which is the outcome that I wanted from it. I have seen a whole bunch of them that haven't been sort of, they just look very sort of slapped together and thrown on there. GFAB one is awesome, so highly recommend that and make sure you get them travel mounts with it. Because, yeah, they just keep it all nice and solid while you're moving in between places, so. Anyway, that's me. Thanks for watching. While you're here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. See you next time.